Oh, wait, Venezuela. Quick, quick update. All right, this is Venezuela, okay? The top of South America. For Americans, this doesn't mean the southern part of America. <laughs> This is Venezuela. This is their current president, Nicolas Maduro. And they just had an election today where he declared himself the winner. We'll get into that. <laughs> He's a former bus driver and he has been president for a while, including a previous very hotly contested election where it seemed like he probably shouldn't have won, but somehow did. And now this one, he was against uh, Machado here. Well, not actually her. She's his opposition, but he created a rule where she wasn't allowed to run. He accused her of fraud and said she wasn't allowed to run. And so this person ran sort of in her stead, Edmundo Gonzalez. And he ran in her stead. And anyway, everyone voted, okay? It was one of the highest turnouts in Venezuelan political history. To get, set you the stage, in the past four years of Venezuela, their oil production has collapsed and oil prices have remained low. So oil being the main source of revenue for the country, that's bad. Uh, everything else is not so good in the, in the in Venezuela. And so the economy, which is already not so great, is now become terrible. Venezuela has tried uh, a couple of, I would say, ill-advised attempts to fight the economic malaise, including price controls backed by the military. So for a while, Maduro was having the military go shops to shop and stop them from raising prices. This surprisingly didn't work. Uh, and in fact, there was mass, mass, mass shortages and people could eventually just couldn't get food. And so Venezuela changed their attitude on that and got rid of price controls because citizens were going hungry. However, once they did that and there was no limit on price controls, they no longer had shortages they had rampant price inflation. So 130,000% in some periods. Now I think it's down to just a low 50%. And so obviously, you know, if I talk about incumbents doing badly, when we have like 6% inflation, 10% inflation in America or, or around the world, understand that I am very skeptical that an incumbent is not extremely unpopular with this level of inflation. However, Maduro claims that he won. Now, all exit polls prior to today and all previous polling indicated he was going to lose in a landslide, <laughs> indicated he was going to lose like 80-20. He was a complete dog in like every credible poll. And yet somehow today he said, yeah, I won. I swept. <laughs> also, strangely, people are not allowed to look at the elect elect electoral receipts. Very interesting, very interesting clutch up. So basically, I think this guy broke it down. High voter participation, everyone coming out to vote and clearly strongly supporting the opposition. Maduro had two options, either admit defeat or engage in a level of fraud we haven't seen in Venezuela before. <laughs> and that's a high bar. He went with fraud. <laughs> he basically said, not nah, I won and I'm going to repress any protests, which is a gambit he pulled last time. Again, people are protesting right now. There's protests in the street. However, with the control of the military, it's difficult to say that he won't be able to hold. And the thing is, a couple, when you have a few friends in your court, it's easier to, you know, when people are challenging you, it's good to have friends at your side. And Maduro has two friends that immediately called to congratulate him on winning. Most other nations have either said, they want a better look into the results or have outright called it fraud. Like Argentina called it fraud. I think America Blinken said it's fraud, but he's got two friends. <laughs> Always good to have Putin and Xi at your back, dude. Russia and China called immediately to congratulate him and certify his victory. <laughs> Russia, China, Cuba, the boys. Basically these countries. These are the main people who immediately supported Maduro's claim to a legitimate and fair victory. However, I'm, I'm pretty skeptical on it. I just wanted to give you the update. Again, rioting happened today. There was protests today. We'll see if they expand. We'll see if there's police violence in terms of blocking it. It's tough to say. However, I will say the opposition party has openly and directly said, not only did we win, we have proof. We are not stepping down. You did not win this election and they are encouraging peaceful protests. We will see what that means. I have no idea how this shakes out. Venezuelans, to my understanding, are extremely upset because the economy being what it is. I mean, you can see under there. This is GDP in Venezuela. It had a boom under oil prices under Chavez and has been absolutely declining. Again, one of the greatest falls in standard of living in any country but even in all of South American countries, it has happened in Venezuela over the past few years. 
Like people have seen their material life get worse every year for the past eight years. And that's, they're furious. I can't imagine they actually voted for Maduro again. So we'll see. We will see how it shakes out. But I wanted to give you guys a quick update on what's happening in Venezuela and why you might see like news about it. That's like the quick breakdown. I voted for Maduro illegally 30,000 times. All right, well then you changed the... Uh this course of history. Thoughts on the elections now? I think Kamala is on an upswing you cannot deny. Trump is freaking the F out and the way he's campaigning kind of reform. I've said this, what I'm saying, I said the, the election is gonna be close. It's obviously gonna be, based on today, it's gonna be close. But uh, if I was a betting man, I would still give it to Trump electorally. I just follow the polls, bro. I read the polls every day. I look at the polls. It's very annoying to me. I'll say this, it's very annoying to me that I made a, a clip, not even a video, just me riffing on stream a clip riffing on the JD Vance couch stuff and just talking about how JD Vance is like an extremely unpopular VP choice. And I got a bunch of people being like, basically shut up and dribble. I got a lot of shut up and dribble. Listen, uh, marketing guy, don't. And I'm like, first of all, I'm debt free <laughs> and rich. I don't need your two cent ad watching my big A clips. So shut the up. I'm absolutely not going to show up and dribble. I'll make fun of JD f Vance if I want to. All right? That's the first thing. That's the first thing I want to say. It was very frustrating to me. I was like, what the f And the second thing is, it's not like I'm fucking out of left field. I think I, more than anyone else on the internet, gave JD Vance a fair shake. I did a whole fucking PowerPoint. I went through his uh, entire voting history. I gave good sides and bad sides. I did a whole fucking... I gave him a fucking shot. However, nobody can deny that he is like, I, I, statistically, I think the the lowest favorability rating for a VP candidate ever. <laughs> Less than Palin. He has the lowest ever right now. It's, it's, yeah, it's minus six. Even Republicans hate him. Ben Shapiro, okay, I don't agree with Ben Shapiro on much. Ben Shapiro on his podcast, which I, of course, watch religiously. <laughs> I didn't just find this quote. Ben Shapiro said, if he had a time machine, he would go back and stop Trump from picking Vance. So I'm not going to apologize. Shut the f up, stupid ass commenters. And I still think, by the way, you know, of all that, you think I'm biased. I still think Trump's going to win the election based on my core thesis for the whole year, which is written up there on my f predictions that I still can't leave because I never finished the video. My core thesis, which is that incumbents are going to do badly but it's so weird because biden is no longer an incumbent when i made that prediction i was like biden will lose 1000 percent no matter what it's so different now that biden legitimately dropped out of the race but my theory is that incumbents will always do badly all over the world because the economy globally is bad inflation up job opportunities down so that's my theory and uh it'll change i mean america's a unique case and we'll see how it goes we have we're so much crazy news that shifts the election week to week it's so wild to me that like in the past 30 days joe biden did the debate the trump assassination attempt happened biden was pressured into dropping out kamala became the new nominee they endorsed her and now she's the front runner before the even the dnc happens this is all in 30 days all this shit is is within one month that's crazy yeah jd vance was chosen the rnc having the idk kamala is looking good most. i agree but also you have to understand that at this point what is it J june july sorry i'm smoking weed at the end of july in 2020 biden was leading by eight points <laughs> biden was plus eight now kamala is like minus two so do you understand that like even though she's doing good it's going to be tough. A debate would be huge. We have to see if they'll do it. We have to see if they'll do it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. This, this, this is my main takeaway from this thought is that if all of that happened in 30 days, what's going to happen in the next 99? Understand that. Understand that shit we can't even think about right now is going to happen in the next 99 days that's going to shake everything up.